Okay. Introduction to uh, lights in Arnold. So to get to the lights, well, to get to Arnold, which is our rendering engine, we go to this right here, Arnold. And we have our lights right here that we can select from this shelf. But personally, I don't like to do that. I like to go here to Arnold, lights, and I like to choose from the list. So first we have area light. Let's click on that. Now, if we click on it, it comes out with um, this plane with a stick. I just call it the stick. So you can call it the normal, but this, since it's pointing this way, is the direction that the light will be emitting. So we can't really uh, see what's going on in the viewport. I mean, there is one way to see if we hit this. So if I hit this little light right here, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. And if I turn up the exposure, we can see what the light's doing in the viewport. I wouldn't count on this so much. I mean, it's a good guide, but um, when we actually like render it, that's what really matters. So we're seeing what's going on. And just to see what happens, if I click on this and I go to this, uh, let's type in wall shader. If I took this down, okay. So it actually reacts to the materials. So if I take down the roughness, then it's giving me like a mirror. And if I spread it out, see how it gets kind of blurred. So it's doing its job. Um, so click right here. And here we go. And so we have these settings. Um, as you can see, let's, let's actually zero it out. So if I go to like channel box, I can see that it's rotated and let's rotate it zero. And then let's hold down, um, was it J? Uh, and then we can get perfect 15 degree increments. So if we take this light, let's say I put it right here. Let's see what it's going to do. Let's go to attribute editor. And if I go to exposure, so intensity, you don't really want to touch the intensity, just keep it on one. And if you want to turn it off for whatever reason, you could put it on zero, but I would just keep it on one. Exposure is where the money's at, right? So the slider stops at five, but if we want it to, um, go higher, we can just put in the number ourselves, 15. And then it kind of like gives us a higher, a larger range. All right. Color temperature, this will make sense when we when I actually go into the rendering. But if we click on this, it works with this uh, Kelvin scale. So the farther to the left, the warmer it is, it's not showing up here, maybe it'll just show up if we actually render and it'll uh, go from like hot to cold. And so this is just a cool way to choose the temperature, the color temperature of the light. You could also go in here and uh, like change, you know what I'm saying, the color yourself. But I think that the uh, these settings over here are better. But like I said, you can't really see them in the viewport, but you can see this in the viewport when you change this. Okay, so that's just the color of the light. I'll just turn it back to white. Uh, right now it's in a quad shape, which means a, um, a polygon basically. So I could stretch it out. I can make it thinner, you know, smaller. And you can see what the effect is doing. So it's kind of changing the look of it. And then if we, you know, change the exposure to, we can get a different look than, you know, if it's like this. So you can see the way the light's changing. So think about it like a real light or like, uh, let's say a, 
a TV screen, right? Like a flat screen, but it can get super bright, you know? Has the millions of colors we can use, but it can get really bright. Um, the light shape, um, see what this does. So we have quad and then we can change it to cylinder, which will give us a different effect. So we see what the cylinder is doing when I change it like this. Now let's change it back to quad. Well, I guess it gives something similar, but it is different. It'll be different when the render happens. So don't rely on the viewport so much where you're like, ah, I can't see it here. It, the render is where the um, we can really test it out, see what it's really doing. And we also have a disc, so like a CD, you know, and we kind of scale this in and out. We can't like squish it though, you know, can't do that or stretch it. I never really tested to see what this does, but I know that it happens. See how it shoots through. I don't know if it does anything. It might do something, it might not. Who knows? All right. So let me go back to my quad. Okay. And we have the spread. I guess certain things don't really show in the viewport. That'll be more like when it renders, we'll see that. I actually don't really rely on the viewport to be honest with you. I guess I'm just showing you uh, what the lights are doing. Yeah, like none of these really are doing anything in the viewport. Visibility right here. Um, this is like how much it affects the object. Like, um, so the diffuse, the diffuse color, if we mess with this, uh, it'll change like the degree of intensity it has on that actual object. So let's say the sidewalk, if it has a sidewalk texture and I take down the diffuse, it'll give us uh, less light or the, the light will affect the color a bit less. Once again, that's one of those things you gotta get into and see. And then there's like light filters, which I won't really get too much into, but they, um, like this right here is a light blocker. So it'll block light from being rendered in a certain area. Again, it won't really show in the viewport, but um, yeah, it's a little bit advanced. It can just be handy sometimes if you have a scene and you don't want a light to affect, or you don't want too many lights, let's say we have two or three lights, and you don't want them all to affect a certain area, you can kind of like take away some light with the light blocker. Um, yeah, so these are pretty much the light settings for the uh, area light. And there's something, well, let me add another light just to show you. If I go over here to lights and let's go to um, yeah, let's go to physical sky. I don't really use this often, but let's just use it now. So we have a, a sky dome light right here, which has a sky attached to it. If I click on this, it'll show like the uh, settings. Like I said, it's we're not going to see a lot of the effect in the viewport. But right now I have two lights in the scene, right? And let's say I want to disable one without having to go in here and pressing H to hide or something like that for one of them. So what I can do is I can go to Arnold and go to utilities and light manager. And I'll go over all this again. I'm just going over the light types now. Um, and what we can do is yours might come in like this and you might not see this other side that has this E for enable. If you click on this, it'll give us the visibility, you know, 
it's like an on and off type thing, right? So on, off. And then if you wanted to, you could like adjust the exposure in here, like, you know, this type of thing. So just letting you know that's there. Um, now we also have, uh, so these are the lights I use. Oh, let me go to, well, I guess this, this right here is a sun and skylight, but there's also like a sky dome, a regular. Well, I guess it's the same thing. This is just attached to this AI physical sky in the, in the color channel. So it's giving you like a, a sky background. But if I do this, if I go to Arnold and I go to lights and I go to sky dome light, I can input something called an HDRI, which is, um, let me show you real quick. Okay, so HDRI, and that would be like a, um, oh, that was it right there. Let me see. This, perfect, right? So what they do is they have a camera and they take a picture of this chrome ball in any location. This is how they make movies too, right? So they take this picture of this and it captures the whole environment around. So it'll have this bus, It'll have this fence, whatever's on this side that we're not seeing. It'll have the cameraman taking the picture of this. So everything there, yeah, it's like this, right? So it's getting um, the environment 360 degrees, right? And then what happens is, is it makes a picture, which has light data, and then we could take it into a 3D program and it will, um, and uh, it'll give us the lighting from that environment. So the lighting on this beach, we can get it by making an HDRI right here, yeah. So they're taking a picture right here and it's getting everything from the environment. So when you see Transformers in their downtown Chicago, there's some guys that got on the roof and did made a bunch of HDRIs um, by just taking pictures. And then you get the lighting from that environment and you get to put your object in here. Um, then we have HDRI, uh, HUB. And so this right here is where we can get our HDRIs. So I'll go here to free samples. And let's say we can go to something like this. We can get ourselves one of these. I'm gonna just go to download. And it downloaded an HDRI for me. There's another site I can go to. Um, I mean, that I'll show you all later and get some more of these. A better selection, I should say. Okay. So I have this HDRI. Um, downloaded it and I'll show you how it works. I'll go back into Maya, right? So this is our HDRI sky dome, right? So if I zoom out far enough, we can see that that's our, our environment right there, or that's what we made. And this is what that chrome ball that we saw, the environment will be mapped on to this. So let's do it. We have to go into this color right here. We go to file. I'm just going to use another one because I have like plenty. Um, computer E uh, HDRI, right? So this is what's going to happen. This right here is an HDRI that basically like the one I, I just downloaded. But what Arnold does is it takes this and it changes it into a .tx file. So this is it says JPEG, so it's totally wrong. It's not HDRI. Um, but it, it does that to all your textures too. 
So if you make a wood texture, you put it on your table, when you apply that to Arnold material and then you press render in Arnold, it'll go through a conversion process and process and change it to a .tx file. So it's like specific for Arnold to uh, use. So this right here is HDRI that was turned into a .tx file. Maybe it was, I don't know. I could have messed up like I did right here and put a JPEG in. Um, let's just, I'm just gonna grab a random one. I don't even know what this is. Some kind of medieval city um or like i said i've got plenty of these and i can show you where to get some mm. let's go to this because i know this is a legit one it's already been transferred so this is a helicopter pad in la at night and me personally i like these i just like uh you load one in and it's like wow um in a different part of the world. Uh, I've never been to LA. Well, I've been to the airport, but anyway, so this is like some rooftop on a helipad, right? Like, and all the lighting from this is gonna be used on oh, Bank of America for our scene. All right, so this is how HDRIs work. And right now I'm gonna turn this off. I can click right here and I can press H to hide it. Um, or I can also go up here to, like I said, utilities, light manager, and I can just disable it here. So plenty of options, right? So I'll disable this one too. Now check this out. If you noticed, all I've been doing is getting my lights from here um, oh, yeah, and there's a mesh light too, which is super cool. So check this out, right? I can make a light bulb, let's say. So let me just do that real quick. So let's say I'm making a fluorescent light bulb. I'll do, take this, um, faces, select all my faces, deselect the middle faces. This is just me just being a little detailed. Uh, Control E. So I did, I selected them on both sides. So I'm gonna go to offset, uh, G, to repeat the tool, G, to repeat the tool, G. All right, so I got this little thing right here. And let's say this is like my light bulb. Now I can make this into a light. I'll just press seven to get that lighting back. Now, all I gotta do is go to Arnold's um, lights, go to mesh light. And what it did was, you see how it kind of lit up the scene a little bit. Now, if I go over here to my cylinder that I just made and click under this, it has light P cylinder. So it took the name and it added a light to it. So you get to it from here, all right? So you have to select it. And now this has light settings. So exposure, remember exposure is the thing. And we can take exposure up. Well, I guess it's not gonna show, but trust me, it's a light and it works. It probably look better uh, when it renders. Cause I'm putting it at 500 now, it should just be like super bright, but I think it's more of an issue of, um, yeah, it's still exposure, so don't mess with this. I think this is just working with the viewport a little bit better. But yeah, we can do that and um, yeah, make whatever uh, geometry you want into a light. So let me delete that. Also speaking of lights, we can use these my lights, which we don't really use anymore. Um, so I go to create lights. So these were for the old render engine, mental ray, but um, we can use them in uh, Arnold, but we have to go to a certain setting, right? So if I go to, let's say point light, right? So point light is like a, a light bulb, a single light bulb, it emits light from all directions. And if we look right here, right? We don't see exposure. 
and we just see this intensity, right? And what I tell you about intensity, don't use no intensity, right? Don't touch it. So we go to the Arnold tab right here and we use this. So the Arnold is what we wanna use. We use these Arnold settings. All right, so these Maya lights can work, but we have to use the Arnold settings, the Arnold rollout, we don't touch this. Okay, so that's point light and I'll just hide that I'll press H and I'll do a create lights spotlight. And if I E, so we see what it's doing, right? It's like the cartoons, doom, 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 doom. You know, we could, I could actually animate this to do that. Have a little character walking. Just saying. Anyway, um, we go to Arnold. Go here. But here's the one of the settings that uh, we can use right here. So this is just the cone angle. So this is just how wide it gets, how uh, skinny it is. And we have penumbra angle, which is kind of like a gradient. Um, it's almost like there's another light, like another radius. And if that radius is larger, then the penumbra angle will give like a, uh, what do I would say, like a fall off, that's what I should say. So it's kind of like, it's strong here, but then it's got like a soft fall off until the edges. So that's what um, penumbra angle would do. And you know, combined with the drop off, so you can get like, a certain effect from uh, messing with these settings right here. Make it a little bit softer, you know. So now we have this like, like um, blurry kind of edge as opposed to like that crisp, you know, this kind of edge. So, you know, you can get a lot of different looks out of these lights. Um, let me see, windows, I mean, wait, create lights. And then we have this light right here. Let me hide the spotlight. And this is directional light. So this light, we can use it like a sunlight. And so it's like infinite, you know, it doesn't stop. And once again, go to the Arnold and, you know, mess with that exposure. Like I said, the viewport just seems to react to this intensity, but it's really all about the render, how it looks when we render it with the render view in Arnold. 